One of the world's most head-turning vehicles on the road are Teslas, all electric vehicles which aren't just cars, but full-out computers on the road. Are Teslas the future of travel with soon-to-be full self-driving capabilities, or are they an additional step of the end of user privacy in an eventual society ruled by tech? Let's explore these questions by focusing on the vehicle targeted towards the masses, the Model 3. The Model 3 is all electric with a max range of 310 miles. It can accelerate in zero to 60 in a little over three seconds, making it one of the fastest cars on the road. And even the lowest end Model 3, starting at 35,000, can outperform most vehicles around it. All Model 3s are equipped with eight cameras for 360 view, 12 ultrasonic sensors around the car, and one frontal radar that can see up to 160 meters in front of it. This is used for their current autopilot functionality, which through over-the-air software updates and a chip upgrade will one day theoretically be capable of full self-driving. But this is a privacy and security channel, and during Go Incognito, I referenced the Tesla privacy policy with a promise to do more research into it. Let's start with Tesla's current track record with their security and privacy practices. One of the most notable issues Tesla has faced is the Model S's key fob that could be easily cracked in as little as two seconds, which gained full access to the vehicle. In Black Hat 2018, researchers were able to take partial remote control of Tesla's autopilot software to make a vehicle dive bomb into the wrong lane. Tesla's cloud environment was breached last year, leading to a leak of sensitive data and theft of computer resources. In 2019, Regulus was able to spoof the GPS data point fed to the vehicle, a central data point in properly maintaining distance between vehicles, and navigating an autopilot, which caused the car to more or less freak out on the road. This year, it was discovered by Green the Only that crashed Teslas keep a large amount of personally identifiable information, such as video recordings pre-crash, the user's phones and tablets paired to the car, 11 phone books worth of contact information, calendar entries, email addresses, previous navigation locations, including residential addresses, and all of this data is unencrypted for anyone to snag. The same user, Very Green on Tesla Motors Club, was able to extract autopilot data even when users opted out of its tracking in the settings. He also added the anonymization of the data is very superficial, as there is still very unique data that can only be tied to a specific individual. Some other things to note are Tesla doesn't really use any open source code. In fact, its autonomous vehicle source code was recently stolen by an employee and given to a Chinese company. Teslas are constantly connected to the internet and several users track the data usage of their vehicles, sometimes uploading over one gigabyte of data in one single day, leading people to ask, what's being sent over? Honestly, Tesla isn't doing half bad. Most of these issues discussed were discovered in safe environments where people had good interests in improving the security of the car. Tesla has an official email you can reach out to in order to become a security researcher to be rewarded for bugs and exploits you might find. And as of today, there aren't really any known instances of a live driving attack being carried out for malicious reasons. But it leaves us wondering, when will something bad happen and is Tesla doing enough? Tesla's privacy policy states you can opt out of telemetry data collection and over-the-air functions of your vehicle, which should protect you from a majority of security and privacy concerns, but it doesn't really mention specifics on what happens if you do opt out. And I spent months trying to figure out an answer to see if it's reasonable to purchase this car at all if you plan to opt out. My story begins with a Tesla store in Corte Madera, California, and I had the incorrect expectation that one of the salesmen would be able to tell me a bit more about the process of opting out. Not only did I receive no information, but the salesman didn't really seem to understand what I was asking. He was more concerned on why I wanted to disable so many features. He even told me I needed a new phone that could support the Tesla app, even though I told him I purposely configured my phone to not support it. Part two is an email to Tesla's privacy team, which is who you contact to opt out. So this would likely be the group who could answer a lot of my questions. Unfortunately, I was met with a generic answer very similar to their privacy policy. Up next was a phone call to generic Tesla support. I asked about opting out and was told this isn't anything they have information or knowledge of, and the call was ended shortly. I picked up the phone again and redialed, hoping for a different experience, and sure enough, I was put in touch with an employee who put a lot of effort in for me, thank you, 
even escalating the issue to a few higher-ups. The overall consensus was that they don't really know what would exactly happen, but they mentioned it would surely void the vehicle's warranty as the car wouldn't get consistent software updates, a supposedly viable reason to deny service to the car. After receiving this news, the Tesla employee told me to go back to a Tesla store to talk to an employee for more details. Going along for the ride, I gave it another shot with another store in Santana Row, and I had a couple employees who seemed very interested in the issue, but were unable to help. They then told me a Tesla service center would be where they disabled the functions of the car, so if anyone knows what would happen, it would be a Tesla service center. The Tesla Santa Clara service center had an employee try to understand my situation, but was unable to help. So they brought over the manager of the service center. He let me know they don't in fact do this type of servicing in person and told me he had absolutely no idea what would happen, but it would likely void warranty. After that, well, I tweeted at Elon and got no response, so maybe next time. And now for the final plan, I reached out again to the privacy team by email, but as tech lore being transparent on my desire to put together a video covering the company's privacy and security practices, my hope shot up when I got a response from the senior PR manager at Tesla wanting to talk to me over the phone, but I got stood up on our scheduled time. And a second time for our rescheduled time, I continually kept reaching out several times but never got a response back to this day. I hope they're okay. <laughs> Luckily, I have the information I need to form a summary of Tesla. Problem one, Tesla has absolutely no documentation, transparency, or any form of publicity related to its data privacy practices, especially pertaining to opting out of OTA functions of its vehicles. It seems they purposely leave users and employees in the dark in order to prevent users from opting out of their mass data collection. I wasn't even guaranteed by anyone that opting out was a reversible action, allowing someone to reinstate a vehicle's standard functions. Problem two, Tesla might open source their patents, but they sure don't open source anything related to their software and open source aside what the car is even doing. We're forced to trust Tesla, and since Tesla does have a very motivating and slightly culty community, any questions are normally met with shaming or claims of ignorance, as this company can do no wrong. Problem three, even though Tesla does seem to be moving towards a more proactive stance on cybersecurity, it would be great if we saw more effort on their back end, such as minimizing unnecessary data collection or having better data anonymization. Maybe they can take some tips from Apple here with differential privacy. But even for end users, Tesla still has no two-factor authentication, meaning if someone snags your login credentials, they can simply download the Tesla app on their phone, log in with your credentials, and take your car with no issues at all. Problem four, there's a lack of user options and customization. Either you opt out of a couple things or all of the car's functions. You as a user have no ability to prevent certain forms of tracking and you're stuck with what they give you. Problem five, this is a very Apple problem. If you opt out of OTA functions of the vehicle, even though it's an authorized feature offered by Tesla, very few things in the vehicle will be covered under warranty and you'll have to pay for items out of pocket. Yes, it's understood some things shouldn't be covered by the warranty, like a common issue fixed by a software update, but if a malfunctioning battery explodes as a result of a hardware problem, from the information I've received, the lack of software updates would be a scapegoat to void warranty. Opting out does seem to be a good solution to a lot of these problems for an individual end user, but what does opting out do? Here is my guess on what you would lose if you opted out. You'd likely lose automatic OTA software updates, built-in music streaming, real-time traffic and supercharger status, most if not all phone app functionality, real-time car assistance, and web browsing. Some other things that are unsure but will likely be affected are future full self-driving upgrade and possibly current Navigan Autopilot may not work as it seems to require internet possibly any chance of any software updates according to several employees I've talked to as the Model 3 does not allow manual software updates and Wi-Fi seems to be disabled too when opting out. But who really knows? Ability to supercharge and maintain free supercharging if it applies to you. And car warranty and ability to service your vehicle. Outside opting out. What are the things that you can currently do to your Tesla and whatever other vehicle you drive to improve its privacy and security without sacrificing a large amount of features? Keep in mind, your new car may know your home, your work, how many passengers are in your vehicle, how fast you drive, your driving habits, where you go throughout the day, and much more. Not to mention, your car is likely directly tied to you through the DMV, who has all of your personal information. 
even if your car doesn't track you, you're still being tracked by surveillance cameras on the road from public government organizations, private forms of surveillance, and even your next door neighbor and the company his camera is supplied by. Long story short, there is little to no privacy on the road, but we can do some things to improve it. Opt out of the few privacy settings granted to you in your vehicle, enable sentry mode to keep people away from your vehicle. One overlooked security feature of the Model 3 is the glove box and the front trunk. These cannot be easily opened unless someone unlocks the car with the keys, meaning a simple break-in means your belongings are safe. This applies to any car, but tint your windows. You'll be grateful in the heat, and it does improve privacy a bit from nearby cars and cameras. Tape up that interior webcam. Enable pin to drive. This ensures that even if someone steals your keys or bypasses your entry method, they still can't drive away with your car. If possible, never hook up the car to Wi-Fi as according to Green the Only, Tesla retrieves Wi-Fi passwords and doesn't just store them on the car locally. Speaking of Wi-Fi, avoid going to service centers as all Teslas automatically connect to service center Wi-Fi and dump a lot of information about your car to them there. Enable valet mode anytime you're letting someone drive your car that you may not fully trust as it'll lock the glove box and hide personal data on the screen. If you use Bluetooth with a mobile device, do not sync contacts, calendar, and other information from your phone as Green the Only claims this data is stored on a vehicle with no way of removing it if something were to go wrong with your vehicle, such as a crash. Speaking of, factory reset your cars before selling or giving them away. Avoid using the web browser to log into any personal accounts and don't allow it any permissions. If you want to avoid using Tesla's built-in cell service, you can set up a hotspot on your phone and tunnel the car's traffic through a VPN using your device, or you can try taking out the car sim altogether, though I haven't been able to figure out how simple this is. Deny phone app functionality as this is a large avenue of attack, and the phone key relies on Bluetooth, which consistently proves to have terrible security. Keyless entry is a big no. Model S and X fobs utilize keyless entry, which can easily be used to steal your vehicle by amplifying the signal. This attack was just recently done to steal a Model S. Keep in mind this isn't a Tesla issue. Keyless entry in general is not a secure feature for any vehicle. On the more extreme level, Tesla has talked about how even when you're not using autopilot, the vehicle is shadow learning and picking up your driving habits to improve autopilot. This should be a given then that the cameras on the vehicle are utilized even when autopilot is not engaged. Tape them up if you desire. In general, no matter what car you drive, similar to my Go Incognito lesson on minimalism, less is more. The less features you use, the more things you opt out of, the better off you're going to be. And lastly, for those who dare, go to their privacy policy and send an email to their privacy team to opt out of over the air functions of the car. And if you do this, please, 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 get in contact with me as I'd love to follow up with someone in depth on this issue. Seriously, please reach out to me. That's it. I hope this video has covered a lot of what you need to know about Tesla security, privacy, and what you can do to improve it. Overall, these cars don't seem to be advanced enough for us to be in a great amount of fear yet, but it's important to keep our eyes out and make sure we do make sure companies are approaching these topics with genuine concern as once these babies go full autonomous, we'll be screwed if everything isn't sealed away properly. Tesla, back up a valid functionality you offer. Let users easily opt out and let them know what happens. And people who watch this far in the video, share it as much as you can. Tweet it at Tesla and Elon. Share with your friends. Reddit. Do whatever you can to spread advocacy to improve the likelihood of some improvement here. Even if you're not a Tesla owner, these cars will be all over the road before you know it, if they aren't already and I'm sure you'll want them to be safe for your own safety. If you want to learn more about security and privacy, make sure to watch the free Go Incognito course, teaching you step-by-step -step everything you need to know. I promise you'll love it. There's a link here and down below. And subscribe to the channel below for more awesome content like this. If you watch this video and are planning on getting a Tesla, I guess use my referral link for a free thousand miles of supercharging. Get some late night candy runs, go on a road trip, do what you want. Thanks for watching everybody and have a lemurious day.